What's up, guys? Didn't do my hair. It's actually 11 o'clock at night, so I'm getting ready for bed. But I want to make this video talking about setting macronutrients um, and how I like to do it. For me personally, I've been doing this for so long, so I have an idea of where my macros need to be and how my body reacts. I know personally that my body gets lean really fast on low fat and high carbs. That's just the way it works. Um, it keeps athletic performance at a high and um, preserves muscle. So fat is not optimal, you know what I mean? There's no one size fits all in terms of diet and macros, but high fat is not optimal to lose weight. It's the most easily stored um, form of fat. So, um, you know, carbohydrates can be stored as fat, but it's less likely than triglycerides or dietary fat. So, I digress. So, you ultimately, the very first thing you want to do is find your maintenance. Um, there's no such thing really as a maintenance. It's always a floating target. Um, but you can get an idea of what it is. There's many calculators you can use, but this is the best way that I think you could do it for accuracy's sake. And it will automatically line up your macros for you. So, I'm, I have certain, you know, beliefs in terms of cutting and preserving muscle. Um, the very first thing I set is protein. That's usually between 0.7 and 1.5 grams per pound of body weight. But the best rule of thumb is just one gram per pound of body weight. Once you start getting to like 8% or so, I would bump up the protein a little bit. But, um, or if performance in the gym is being hindered and decreasing drastically, I would definitely increase protein and increase overall calories as well. Um, then the next thing you set is the fat. We'll go over exactly what that should be. And then last is carbs because carbs are non-essential. Yeah, they're your body's preferred source of energy, but you don't require carbohydrates. You can get carbs from gluconeogenesis, which is essentially the breakdown of proteins in converting into glucose, or you could get ketones, which would be from pretty much adipose tissue breaking into ketones. So, um, the very first thing you want to do is track your food for a week. So track your weight your first day and all through the week and we're gonna look mainly at the average um, but we're gonna say our person's 200 pounds right days one through five he decided he was gonna take in 60 grams of fat 400 grams of carbs and 200 grams of protein so if you add up the calories knowing that there's four kilocalories in one gram of protein and carbohydrate and nine kilocalories in a gram of fat that gives us 2,940 calories for those five days. Day six and seven, he eats a little more. He has 95 grams of fat, four 15 grams of carbs, and 230 grams of protein for a total of 3,435 calories. Now, what we want to do is, since we're trying to find the average, um, the average of this to give us our maintenance, we're going to add up all the calories for the days and that will give us 21,610 total calories through the week. Now comes the interesting part of actually finding maintenance. So you take your total calories and divide by seven because there's seven days in a week we're trying to find the maintenance. That'll be 3,087 kilocalories roughly to maintain your body weight. Now this is going to depend on your goals whether you're trying to gain weight or if you're trying to lose weight. So let's say our guy lost about a pound. So we know he's in a deficit right now at 3,000 calories. Typically, if you're trying to gain weight, you want to have between a two and 600 calorie surplus. And for a deficit, you want to be in like a three to 800 calorie deficit in order to lose weight. Rate of weight loss should be between 0.5 and 1% of body weight per week. That'll maintain muscle, um, keep glycogen and training high, and just prevent muscle breakdown as much as possible. So, what we're going to do is, the very first thing we set is protein. Um, this is the most real, like, important macro to really focus on when you're trying to cut, or even gain weight, too. Um, so, we typically go from 0.7 to 1.5 grams per pound of body weight. I usually recommend just 1 gram per pound of body weight because 1.5 is kind of overkill but for some people whether they're enhanced or they're just genetically elite I would just 
recommend an upper part of that threshold, maybe like 1.2 grams per pound, but one is good for this example. So that's going to be 200 grams of protein. Since there's four calories per gram of protein, that's going to give us 800 total calories. The next thing we're going to go ahead and set is fat. I like to see fat between 20 and 30 percent of total calories. Um, that just seems good for overall hormonal hormonal balance and just um, overall balance within the diet because you don't want an uneven diet. It's not sustainable. And to, on an extremely low fat diet, you're probably not going to be satiated much by food. You know, carbs are only so filling unless you're eating all vegetables and shit. So we take our total calories, so 3,087. And we're going to take 25% of that for fat. So between 20 and 30%, we'll go right in the midpoint at 25%. That's going to give us 772 calories from fat. And then there's 9 calories per gram of fat. So you divide 772 by 9. That's going to give us 86 grams of fat. So now we have our fat at 86 grams, our protein at 200 grams. The last thing is carbs. The reason carbs is last is because they're not essential. You know, your body can break down proteins to get glucose, which is through the process of gluconeogenesis, or your body can break down body fat and essentially use ketones for energy, which is, you know, pretty much beyond the realm of this video, but um, I could do a video about the ketogenic diet if you guys really care. But to find carbs, you're just going to fill in the gaps. So we know there's 3,087 calories that we have to leave from. You're going to subtract 800 from the protein. We're going to subtract 772 from the fat, and that's going to give us 1515 in terms of calories. And we know there's four calories per gram of carbohydrate, so 1515 divided by four is going to give us 379, and that is the amount of carbohydrates that we're going to have. Again, there's many different ways you could do this, and this might be overly complicated for some people, but if you sincerely want like a, a good idea of where to start so you're not really wasting your time, I think this method is very beneficial. Um, again, you could take a stab in the dark and pick a random spot, but I highly recommend this method. Be sure to like this video because I know this can help some people out, and please share it. Don't forget to leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.